Attractions Group podcast. This is the first ever breaking news episode, so it's out of our normal order, but this is episode 73. I'm Ryan Sir. With me, as always, is Don Helvig. Don, didn't expect to see you today. How are you doing? Yeah, I didn't expect to see you either, but uh, big news uh, out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, with the news that uh, Coney Island will permanently cease operations on December 31st following the conclusion of Coney Island's Knights of Lights holiday event. Yeah, yeah, I heard that too. And um, so uh, this news is breaking. We, we are getting information as it comes. Uh, as of this recording, this was released within the last hour or so. But uh, it appears that um, the uh, this essentially the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, so MEMI Concerts, uh, purchased the uh, the facility, and they're going to build a um, what they want to consider the best concert venue in the world. It's going to be $118 million, but at least it's going to be held in entertainment, Don, right? That's right. And it's uh, it's being called a one-of-a-kind entertainment campus, according to a press release that uh, you know we've been able to, to look at. Coney Island, though, I mean, just iconic. Um, been around since 1886. A sunlight pool, which was pretty much all that was left of Coney Island, uh, was added in 1925. So just a lot of history. A lot of tradition, um, a part of so many families' lives in Cincinnati. You know, it's all going to be gone. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes with a cruel swiftness in a lot of cases. Um, let me ask you this, though. And, and this is, anytime, I, like in the last hour or so, when people have asked me what my thoughts were on this, I've always said, once they remove the rides, this was a matter of time. Are you on the same page with me with that? Oh, absolutely. I, I thought as soon as the rides were gone, it, it lasted a few more years, and I, I thought it would. Um, you know, I, I know COVID well, was very hard on that park. Um, never really seemed to recover from that. But they had, you know, added a few new things around uh, Sunlight Pool and had some different activities and things. And I uh, had plans to add a few more smaller things uh, that were going to be coming in. So, you know, you want to say you're surprised, but you're not. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I, as much as I hate to make this uh, analogy, but it, it's like when, when your grandma dies, like you knew that day was going to happen, but it doesn't feel real when it does, you know, you, you no, have the same shock. I mean, for me, I mean, for me, Coney Island kind of, you know, was gone in 1971 because the Coney Island that I knew as a child, you know, left when those rides and everything moved up to, to, to become King's Island. And it was just never the same. You know, they always had the pool there. And in the 70s, you know, we'd go a couple times a year and just go to Sunlight Pool. Then they added some rides back in. Uh, but they were, you know, more of the family flat rides. There, you know, there weren't roller coasters or the haunted house. You know, the rides, again, that I remembered as a child. So it was never the same. But it was still a nice, nice venue. It was great for company picnics. Uh, and when those companies did, uh, you know, have a, an outing there, you know, there were those smaller family type rides for everybody to do. And there was the pool. So it, it still, uh, you know, served a purpose for a long time. But once the rides were gone, like you mentioned, uh, you knew then that it was just a question of time. Yeah. I mean, to me, I was thinking about this and I feel like this park has died three times. The first time was in 1971 with the birth of Kings Island. Uh, and then it resprung from that. And then the second time was a few years ago. Was this before or after COVID that they removed the rides? I can't remember. It was right after. The, I mean, it wasn't long after. Yeah, so they removed the rides. And it's like the Coney Island you knew is now gone. But it's still going to operate as a water park. And we're excited about the future. And then this, you know, third time's the charm. It looks like even uh, the historic uh, Sunlight Pool is going gonna, is gonna to be gone as well. Yeah, and that pool, um, you know, that, that's again is part of history. It was the largest recirculating swimming pool in the world. And that's a pretty big place, so it was always kind of special when when you would go there uh, to enjoy Sunlight Pool. That you knew that you were in, you know, this world record breaking uh, swimming pool. Yeah, um, it, it, and it's funny because I um, I had been to Coney Island uh, several times throughout my life. I was never a season pass holder or anything, but I was like a once or twice a year for a long time. Um, and it, it was, I didn't do the pool until about 2014, 2015. And I, I'd always heard it was the biggest and stuff. And I walked past it and didn't really understand the scope. But I always thought it was cool that like 
they had to have a lifeguard in a um, rowboat in the middle of the deep end because it was so big. Yes. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was huge. They had the slide uh, in the one end that was, uh, you know, a big part of my childhood. That was a big deal to climb up that slide. Uh, and it seems so, so big, you know, when you're you know five, six, seven years old, uh, you know, but a couple of years ago when I went back with, with some friends that came down from Michigan you know, the slides, you know, it's still there. So it brings back all those memories of, of your childhood. And then they had the diving boards at the deeper end and, um, you know, but again, it was just part of those, that, that tradition, part of the fabric of my childhood um, was a special place. And there's, there's literally, you know, hundreds of thousands uh, of people in the greater Cincinnati area. They're going to have that, that same thing today where they're, they're having all those, you know, rekindling all those memories of, of Coney Island, whatever period of time that they seem to become, um, accustomed to whether it was, you know, pre Kings Island when it was one of the finest amusement parks out there in the country or afterward when it was more about sunlight pool and then, you know, some of the smaller rides. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's funny, we, we've talked about this several times on both of our podcasts, but it's grossly appropriate that, you know, so many of us picked up this goodbye Coney Island book for, for you audio listeners. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've got the goodbye Coney Island book where they happen to find just hundreds and hundreds of them allegedly in storage at King's Island, they're all water damaged and stuff. Um, But that one lays out what they thought was going to be the death of Coney Island. um, And uh, it didn't happen. So uh, for those of you who aren't in the Cincinnati market, um, the the short of the whole story is that uh, in 1970, it started in the late sixties, but without getting too complicated, 1971 Coney Island shuts down in favor of moving it up I-71, uh, about, thir- you know, what, 20 miles or so uh, to a little city called Mason, Ohio to become Kings Island. Um, so the original intention was that they were going to just they were going to demolish the park. Then local demand was like, we want this pool. So they kept the pool and then it was operated as just a pool for, you know, about a decade or so. And then they started slowly adding in little family rides and stuff. And they, they had a, uh, a SBF, not an SBF visa, but uh, one of those uh, galaxy coasters uh, the Pepsi Python, which was later known as the Python. Um, and then a few years ago, they announced they're going to keep the pool, but they're getting rid of the rides. Uh, and then as of today, we found out, uh, that the, the Coney Island has a weird situation where there's a couple of different hands in the pot there because part of Coney Island, uh, be- uh, was with, um, River Downs racetrack, which is now, I think Belterra is what, what they're calling it now. So it's got a, a, ra- a racehorse track on it. And then it also has a, a very large concert, indoor outdoor concert venue called Riverbend on it. Uh, the company that owns and operates Riverbend purchased the rest of Coney Island to build this this large state-of-the-art venue. I'm also excited about the venue, but I'm far more upset about uh, the Coney Island thing. But Don, why don't you tell me, uh, we, we, we've remembered, we, we did a Tower Topics about our memories of, of Coney Island, um, as far as, well, at least your memories of the closing of Coney Island. Can you just talk a little bit once more about some of your favorite memories of going there when it was the premier park in Cincinnati? Well, I mean, not only Cincinnati, but it was considered one of the finest amusement parks in the country. You know, um, when Walt Disney was planning to build Disneyland, he consulted, uh, he and his brother Roy consulted with the Coney Island group, uh, the things they need to do to build uh, an amusement theme park. So uh, when they were building Disneyland and then conversely, when Coney was thinking of uh, you know, moving everything and building Kings Island. They consulted with, with uh, Roy Disney about that. So um, it's funny how those kind of things work out. But no, just a lot of memories. Um, the rides, Tumblebug, uh, flying scooters, which became the Flying Eagles at Kings Island. There was a haunted house attraction that I loved. Uh, the log flume came in uh, toward the end of Coney's run. Uh, that was a big, big deal when that uh, debuted at Coney Island. Um, the end. The Scrambler, uh, the Grand Carousel at Kings Island was there, one of my first amusement rides. They had uh, these rocket ships that went around in circles. That was the last ride I ever did at Coney Island. It was a night ride. I remember that. Uh, the roller coaster shooting star. Um, my Really my lone regret in my career in the amusement uh, theme park industry was not riding that. I had an opportunity to do that on the final day. Went through the line, sat down uh, in the car as they were getting ready to chop check the lap bars, yeah, chickened out. And, uh, you know, the next year when I rode the racer, then I started to regret not riding the shooting star at that point. So uh, just memories like that. The Lost River was another ride that was was so much fun. Uh, my sister and I would ride that over and over again. 
so, um, you know, just a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of memories. And when I would go back and, you know, it was just a shadow of its itself at that point, uh, after all, everything moved to Kings Island in the, in the seventies and eighties, you know, through today even, and, you know, the buildings, you know, still brought back memories that were there, you know, you'd see the moonlight gardens building and the gift shops and some of the, the other things around where the, some of the games were and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just always rekindled a lot of those memories there and just a special place. And that really kind of started my interest in the industry was just being able to go there often as a kid. Now, my family, we didn't go on vacations to Florida and places like that. Our our vacations were, were Coney Island. We lived in a um, place called Anderson Township, which was about a 15 minute ride to there. So it was something we could do multiple times a year. We would historically go um, with our with our cousins on Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day type, you know, type holidays to to just have a day of fun at Coney Island. Yeah, I mean, I I would say that um, my memories of Coney. I was born, you know, a while after Coney Island uh, became Kings Island, and um, but Coney Island was always not irrelevant to me um, because some of my earliest memories of Coney Island were when I was like a Cub Scout when I was little. They used to have their like. Uh, I don't know if they called it a convention or whatever there, but each troop um, from around the whole area, like Cincinnati area, so there was like a hundred or so. We'd each have their own display, whether it's, you know, how to, like ours was how to cook in a Dutch oven one year. I do remember that. Um, and then uh, the one that was most popular was there was a troop that would always build these like repelling walls so you could repel down. Um, and I was little, so I... I wasn't little, I was like probably 10 or so, but the older kids that were like in high school were the ones that like manned the booth there. But we, uh, we, I used to go and I would check in with my, my troop or whatever, but I would mainly, uh, go walk around, ride the rides and, and do all those attractions and stuff. So I always look forward to that every year. And I would also attribute that as one of the reasons why I'm, uh, you know, into the parks in general, um, because there's, Locally, and I think you and I know this, there are people that are theme park enthusiasts and there are people that are roller coaster enthusiasts and there are people that are Kings Island enthusiasts, just like with every other park. But I'm saying from from my perspective, but I'm not certain that I would be a theme park enthusiast. I might just be a Kings Island enthusiast if it weren't for me seeing from a young age that like, hey, there's like a lot of community here. There's a lot of like interesting things that can happen here. And, uh, you know, having the, those memories is... uh is pretty cool. Um, now I remember it always happened in the spring, so it would get flooded out quite often. And I think they stopped doing it there for that reason alone. Um, which is a bummer. So it's not like I got to go back throughout my adult life and, and so on and do that. But, um, I'll always like cherish that. Uh, they did it at the convention center for a while and conventions are cool too, you know, but, uh, it was nothing like this. So that was just like, that, that just brought back those warm thoughts of, uh, remembering to do that. So, um, the thing I would challenge you for those of you who are listening to this, uh, our Twitter at attractions underscore GRP. Why don't you tweet at us? If you have a memory of Coney Island, uh, tweet at us your favorite memory. Uh, like when you heard that it was closing, what your thoughts were, you know, obviously like frustration, anger, sadness, stuff like that, where they're all part of the, the game here, but I'd love to hear like the first memory that popped in your mind when it came to, uh, when it came to Coney Island closing. Um, but Don, of course, the story doesn't end there. Um, we, we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit more about what is replacing it because I, the silver lining is that it is still going to remain an entertainment. Um, you know, I think that one thing that you and I never really discussed, but I think you're on the same page as me is it, it makes me sick that when they tore down the Cincinnati gardens, it became a factory. Like if they tore it down and it became something fun, like that would be an easier pill to swallow. But for this, it's going to become a, um, you know, a concert venue, which will be the third one on that site, as I mentioned before. So right now there's uh river bend, which is an indoor outdoor, uh, facility that seats in the tens of thousands. Um, uh, right across from that is PNC pavilion, which is just like the indoor. When I say indoor, I mean, just undercover, like an awning thing. Um, 
And uh, this one is, I guess, going to be bigger. I haven't seen anything about the seating capacity, but let me read the the statement that uh, that they made. This is the sizzle, and I'm, obviously, I'm going to include for those of you who are watching on YouTube the the photos of the concepts and stuff. Uh, but it says Mimi Concerts and Cincinnati Symphony are proud to announce plans for a 118 million dollar state of the art music and entertainment venue at the Coney Island site, creating a one of a kind entertainment campus destined to be a must play stop for the music industry's top acts. Uh, is it Memi or Mimi? Do you know that? I I've always seen it in, in writing cause they were, they were in the, the fighting for building a venue at the banks for a while too. Anyway, uh, they aim to create the nation's best amphitheater positioning Cincinnati among top tier cities and giving it a competitive edge and hosting major music acts. The entertainment complex will complement existing facilities on the live music campus, Riverbend Music Center, and PNC Pavilion, and will usher in the future of live of the live music industry. That's a pretty dang bold statement right there. Uh, the new venue will include state-of-the-art sound system, cutting-edge performance technology, and best-in-class amenities, promising a new dimension of live music experiences at an architecturally stunning facility. Uh, the preliminary design is in progress for the facility, uh, with many key decisions yet to be finalized, additional information will be real uh, will be released in the coming weeks and months, and we'll certainly be covering this, especially in Pick Six, as they start to announce these things because we're about entertainment, not just about the theme park industry. But um, that sizzle that they just gave us does sound exciting. If it wasn't for replacing a park, I'd be like super excited about that, right? It, it's going to be incredible. I mean, it's going to it's going to be great. Uh, for for the Cincinnati area to have a facility like that. It's going to bring a lot of different acts to Cincinnati. It's going to create some job opportunities. Uh, so it, it's going to be great in that respect. Uh, um, you know, what, what Coney Island, you know, has been for the last few years, I could still go there. And as I walked around the park, not the park, but the grounds, I could visualize in my head, I could remember exactly where things were located, you know, in terms of the rides and, you know, the walking down the midway and, you know, where the shooting star was, you know, which kind of runs into Riverbend, but just to be able to visualize all that stuff. So that'll be a lot harder to do once this, uh, you know, is built and, and open. You're not going to really have those, you know, be able to have those remnants and be able to mark where, where things were at that time, you know, as much. It's kind of like when I go to, um, the Nashville now where Opryland used to be, and they've got the big, you know, the big mall and all that kind of thing there where you, you can no longer remember what was where. So it's going to be sort of like that, but no, it's going to be a great, great thing for uh, the Cincinnati area. It's exciting, you know, news, uh, you know, for the entertainment and music fans. Um, so in that respect, uh, it's going to be a great thing. Yeah. I'm going to make it a point to, to see a show there. I, I mean, I, I am not, and I will not encourage any of our listeners to, boycott this venue for Coney Island. The deal's done. You're not stopping anything. You're not affecting anything. We're all sad. But at the same time, this will employ a lot more people than Coney Island ever did. Well, not ever did, oh, but yeah, did yeah. since 71. And it would have been a little little tougher pill to digest, you know, before they removed all the rides. And I, I looked it up right at the beginning. We said right around or right after COVID. It was the fall, September of 2019, when they announced the rides were being removed. So it was going into that COVID year where the rides were no longer there. But that would have been a little bit harder if the rides were still there. But they're not. It's, you know, it's, it's a swimming pool. But still, again, a big part of, you know, um, you know, people's lives. And there were a number of people that had season passes for sunlight pools. So, you know, for them, you know, it's going to be, be sad because that's something that they still did. But, um, you know, it, it, there's just a lot of memories uh, that are there. But, you know, it, it's one of those things, Ryan, I always tell people when they ask me about, you mentioned Cincinnati Gardens, is, you know, as they could tear down, you know, the, the, the building, uh, but they can't erase the memories. Yeah, I, I completely agree. They can never take that away from you. And that's uh, that's one of those gifts that you have for for really the rest of your life is they can't they can't stop that. They can't they can't take away the fact that you rode the, the little rocket ships as your last ride or that you didn't, in your case, ride the shooting star like those memories will always be with Keep you. Keep bringing that up. Why don't you? <laughs> no, that's that's mm. really I mean, I, I, that's still a sore point. I didn't ride the shooting star. But um, but, you know, even just. When you go down like Kellogg Avenue, you know, and you see the the entrance with Coney Island, little, you know, where the the parking tolls and that, you know, are at, um, you drive by and then you see where the the turnpike cars were and where the Lake Como uh, train went. I mean, those things all come flooding back every time I'm down in that area, you know, or I'm coming over from northern Kentucky across the bridge. It all comes flooding back. And I think, you know, 
I'm not alone in that. I think there's a lot of people, you know, thousands of people in Cincinnati that remember it. Do you think they'll keep the arch that you go under to park? That's that was pretty old. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how you would, you know, keep that there. I, I think you'd have to kind of, the, depending on how it all gets laid out with what's going where, you know, it could remain. But I don't know. I don't know how you would would keep that. I think there would there would be a different look to it. Well, you got to remember too. We're talking about a huge plot of land because I imagine that. Um, for those of who don't know, although there's two venues there, they never run two shows at once. It's just logistically impossible. So they have an infrastructure for parking and stuff. So I imagine that it's going to be the Coney Island plot, uh, and then plus the parking that Coney Island has, which is another six or seven acres, I'd say at least. I don't Mm -hmm. know how big an acre is. I'm just guessing, but still. Um, so I think it's possible, but we, again, this just got announced within the last hour, hour and a half. So there's so much we don't know. In fact, they admit in their release that there's so much they don't know. They, um, they have these concept pictures and stuff. They're very blue sky ish. Um, but speaking of sky, um, one person did point out that the disappointing thing with this is it appears to be an open air venue, but Cincinnati really needs an indoor venue. Uh, we've got the heritage bank center downtown, but that's, uh, a very aging venue that's uh, in its fifties uh, and almost all the other, every other major city has replaced their venue or uh, did major renovations while ours had a uh, sort of renovation in the nineties. And then <laughs> it's still kind of the same from there. Yeah, there is a need for a, a new indoor facility. So Cincinnati can have a chance to, um, you know, bid on things like an NCAA basketball tournament, you know, final four or something like that. So there is that need. Uh, but you know, in the summertime and that, you know, it's not bad to to have an outdoor type venue. I agree. But the, my, my issue is we have three on that property now, three, mm-hmm. three venues that are only good in the summer. But if this were an indoor venue in a similar spirit, um, they could have events in January. They could, have, I mean, I just don't know what's going to make this so cutting edge. I, I'm looking for, I'm not doubting it. I'm looking forward to getting more information about that because Cincinnati has had, the area has had such an influx of venues in the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. We got the Icon uh, Music Center at uh, the banks, you know, at in downtown Cincinnati near the stadiums. We got the Ovation, which is now got some sort of sponsor name now, which is the same thing as the banks. Uh, PNC Pavilion was about 15 or 20 years ago. So that's marginally new. Riverbend was from the mid 80s. Uh, Timberwolf raised from the dead for a year last year. Tons of new venues, you know, but. Well, well, well let's talk about Timberwolf now that you bring it up. Um, this would appear to not be good news if they ever wanted to get back into the concert business at Kings Island. You ever heard of the term beating a dead horse, Don? Well, uh, Timberwolf is dead. There's no doubt about it. And this is just beating it still. It's, I, I feel bad for it. I love Timberwolf. You know, I don't want to go on about Timberwolf, but I, I really am so glad that uh, Kings Island brought back concerts last year because I really enjoyed uh, intending them there. I think it brings an energy to the park and stuff. So I wish they would do it, but it's it's never going to happen. There's so much competition now. Um, mm-hmm. But let, but let's get back to Coney Island a little bit because um, I want to make sure that this is covered. But uh, you, you talked a lot about your memories from like the 70s and so on. But as far as modern Coney Island is concerned, what was your favorite ride there? The modern Coney Island? Yeah, like... Uh, since after, after Kings after after Kings Island after, yeah after everything went, everything with the Kings Island mm-hmm. um, I would have to say that they had a that, you know they had a carousel I would say that would be it or the Dodgem okay. attraction that they had I like I like those two um, you know so yeah I would I would go with those two rides yeah I would say they've got uh, an old Eli Bridge cable driven uh, Ferris wheel or at least they did. Uh, and that was my favorite because it's, if ever you were to appreciate modern technology, just what the, so I got friends that are like, that were rides managers there. And it's like to work the, the, the Ferris wheel, you basically have to have a PhD in, in theme park rides because it has to be perfectly weighted. You have to know like, okay, a little bit of rain's okay. But if it crosses this threshold, absolutely not. And if it did rain last night, you have to be able to make that judgment call of, 
like it's not going to, it can't run today or yes, it can because the cables slip. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's one of my favorite and, you know, carousels are, or I'm sorry, Ferris wheels are just really enjoyable in general and classic too. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Race. Yeah. I enjoyed that too. Um, it wasn't called the Dodge, but the, the, the bumper cars, we'll call it that, that were there. Those were pretty, pretty good. I mean, it had enough room to kind of, uh, you know, get up a little bit of speed in that. So I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I take you back to, and I'm going to paraphrase here. I tried to find the audio for this, but I, I couldn't with a quick search. But uh, Gary Walks's, uh speech at the closing uh, before the fireworks in 1971, Labor Day 1971, where you know, we, we start these new memories at Kings Island or be beyond your wildest dreams and stuff. So uh, locally here, we, we are very lucky that we do still have Kings Island. Um, so, it, you know, it, it, the Coney Island of the past is dead and it has been since 71. Um, and, you know, holding on for dear life is kind of, I, I mean, it did thrive business wise. It did thrive for years, but as far as like being the grand theme park that it once was, if you look at the photos and stuff, from the seventies and sixties. And it just, this was very much a carnival compared to uh, what Coney Island was. You know. Just a shadow of what it was, you know, my memories from the late sixties, you know, to 71, you know, of it, uh, it was, it was never, and you always thought that, you know, when I would go and, you know, you would ride some of the rides they had, and they were good flat rides. Um, they had a nice little collection there. Um, you know, but you, you would do that and, you know, maybe go into sunlight pool and it just, it wasn't the same because you kept thinking about what it used to be. Yeah. And, and that's, that's true with anything and especially theme parks, you know, if they put in a new ride where they removed your, your favorite ride, that's all you're going to be able to think about at least for a while, but this is a whole park. So this is a whole portion of people's childhood that was partially moved and partially destroyed, you know? So I, I, I completely understand the nostalgia, but, um, so I think it started out as like an apple farm back in, you know, the 1800s and James Parker. Mm -hmm. uh, he started it by renting out uh, his 400 acres of land for picnics. And it just kind of evolved from there. Yeah, it's uh, so he, he started it back in 1867. Uh, James Parker founded Parker's Grove. Uh, and then he late, later sold it in 1886 for $17,500. Man, if Coney Island were for sale for $17,500, I think we should go half seas on it. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. If it was for sale for that, I definitely would have uh, had interest in buying it just just for that nostalgia piece of it. Well, not just that. I feel like just but between you and I, I feel like we could probably make it pretty successful. But uh, uh, we could we could have made a go of it. We we, we definitely could have. But um, there are two really great ways to uh, in the next several weeks, uh, if you're listening to this early on, um, kind of pay tribute to Coney Island. First of all, is uh, the, uh, attending the night of lights, which is a drive through thing that's actually through Coney Island. And it's through a lot of the areas where there were rides and, you know, it's all very historic and stuff. Um, also, uh, entertainment junction has, um, a Coney Island display that's Coney Island circa 1967. We actually did an attractions group podcast episode on it. Uh, so you can go there. It's not the Coney Island that you would have known as a kid. If you're in my age bracket, but more like if you're in Don's age bracket, if you know what I mean. But um, uh, those are two. That definitely, Ryan, I highly recommend going to Entertainment Junction mm -hmm. and checking out the Coney Island display. Because if you are someone that did experience it in its last five or six years, it will definitely rekindle those memories. And, um, you know, you just when we were there, I just wanted to keep, you know, looking at things. And then I would remember riding the tumble bog and remember riding you know, the other rides, everything but the shooting star. I remember riding. Hmm. What do you think it would have been like to ride the shooting star? Well, <laughs> I think I would, I, I would have then had zero regrets in my, in my uh, career in the industry. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Uh, well, I guess I should say, follow us on all your favorite podcast apps, Apple, Google, Spotify, uh, subscribe on YouTube. We do a video version. We often throw in photos uh, Don makes funny faces when I get facts wrong or mispronounced stuff. So that's kind of worth your price of admission. Um, follow us on Twitter slash X at attractions underscore GRP. Uh, check out Don's blog. I'm sure you're going to be blogging about this at theme parks by Uh, link in the description, of course. Um, yeah, uh, kind of a bummer. And, uh, this is our first breaking news episode, but
Uh, thanks for uh, for listening, everybody. For because we're literally recording these things twelve hours apart. We've never done that before, but no, we haven't. Yeah. So uh, not really the way that I thought this next episode was going to go, but uh, you know. Well, I'll close with this, Ryan. You know, it's something that I, I was, uh, you know, once told, and it's it's kind of something that resonated with me. Whenever there are things like this that, you know, get torn down, removed, um, renovated, it's, it's okay to, to, you know, respect history, but you can't revere it. You know, you have to keep making progress and, and move forward to the future. Right. And again, I mean, it is staying in the entertainment aspect, so uh, that definitely softens the blow. But yeah. So thanks for listening to uh, putting up with us twice this week, everybody until next time.